Teachers of Reddit, what is the best plot twist you didn't see coming in your student's writing? I had a student who was obsessed with silverback gorillas. I mean, everything he wrote was about silverbacks. Even for the most random question, for example, about Shakespeare's sonnets, and his answer would somehow quite logically twist around to his gorillas. After a while he added a character, the Queen of Sanzibar. She controlled this wild and often violent band of gorillas. At the end of that year, I ended up moving away and at my farewell lunch he gave me a card which says, there will never be another story about the silverback gorillas of Sanzibar because the Queen of Sanzibar is moving to Australia. Blew me away. I never thought his stories were analogies of our school students or that I had made that much of an impact on his life. Humbling. Teaching 8th grade English, a student was writing about a supernatural investigator. About two-thirds through the story the narrator is listing all the greatest horrors he had seen. The list ended, I once saw an English teacher named Mr. My name, slough off his skin and devour a classroom of students. Dot quote. It was a great surprise, and story. Teaching middle school, gave an, about me, essay early in the year. One student wrote about how they had a rough home life, parents divorcing, etc. It was very well written and heartbreaking until the last paragraph where he talked about finding religion in the past year. I've learned not to judge people who do wrong, because only God can judge, and they will burn. One of my kids got a writing assignment to write a new ending to a story. It was a classic star-crossed lover's narrative so I figured they'd do a happily ever after. Nope. The female protagonist ended up using the dude for his knight status to escape the thumb of her father, then killed him and went out on her own. When my nephew was six or seven or so they had to write a description of how to make a sandwich. My nephew proceeded to write a detailed account of how to make a sandwich, which includes getting a mold of a witch and putting wet sand into it. you are get the idea. The teacher said in all her years of teaching that no kid had ever done that. She asked to keep a copy because she thought it was so funny. Edit. Thanks for the hugs. I taught an English 101 where I had a very open-ended writing assignment to gauge where the students were. It was a long time ago, but if I remember correctly it was to write about something that happened in your life that was memorable. Like I said very vague. One student wrote about how his friend had run away from home and asked to stay in his tree house. Okay. Mild enough. Then it turned pretty dark when the student wrote that he was woken up by fire sirens only to find the treehouse was completely engulfed in flames. Of course no one realized it was occupied. That was 25 years ago and I still remember the chill I got when I read it. I had a second language learner who wrote about the death of a close relative. He talked about feelings of extreme sadness, and then said, I have come to know that this feeling is called grief. It was the most heartbreaking thing I've ever read. I had a student write an amazing argumentative essay. He was a shy kid, and we had been working on building his confidence and taking risks in his writing. I get to the end of the paper and he notes, I always wanted to include this argument, but I just wasn't sure. He leaves a citation. I go to his work cited and see a proper citation along with a hyperlink. I click it. Rick Astley begins to sing. I wipe away a tear. Well done, kid. Well done. I was picking up recycled paper for my students with severe disabilities to shred using our machine. The essay we found was about some kid that is going through abuse. I made a report and student is now doing better. My wife taught high school English, 9th and 10th grade, in California for 10 years. We are both literature majors and so she'd often let me grade some of her papers. The amount of disclosure of being abused, raped, suicidal was, holy shit. Not a teacher, but in high school my class was tasked with writing a one-to-two page essay about an unpleasant experience in our lives. So, I wrote a twelve-ish page, third-person narrative about myself writing the essay. I had a student write that she flew to California to see Post Malone because he's, so hot, she got a henna tattoo on her chest of him before the concert. Unfortunately, it turned out she's allergic to henna and it turned into a terrible rash. She still has the scar. Plot twist. It turned out to be a permanent tattoo. Not a teacher but a student. We were set a challenge in English lit at high school to rewrite the ending to Of Mice and Men. Can't remember all the details, but my ending change was that George shoots Lenny, then turns the gun on himself out of guilt. I then detailed a final scene, where a small mouse scurries along the floor, and settles in Lenny's hand. 
I was made to read out the two to three page ending to the class, and it got used as an example for the next few years in other classes. I think my teacher was surprised that I wrote something with so much thought and detail, and actually read the book. I wasn't known for my soft side, I was a bit of a class joker. My only ever work at school. They turned it in. Not a teacher but one time in middle school I wrote about a story called Iflaps. The story takes place in a society where people can't blink and this scientist discovers blinking serum and is so happy he blinks his eyelids off and dies of sleep exhaustion. Years later my mom told me that the teacher RLLY enjoyed the story and said it had great twist at the end. Still proud of that story to this day. One of my middle school students in Korea ended a story about his family with it raining alcohol and snowing cocaine. Everyone freaked out and murdered one another. Nat. But when my son was in second grade his teacher gave out the usual coloring page plus writing prompt. It was a Halloween theme. There was a smiling child in a costume. Holding a bag and the prompt was, when I looked inside my trick or treat bag, I found. My child wrote, a human head. Seven years old and already a master of the horror plot twist. Cool. Not a teacher but a student. We had to write an ending to a story about a man driving home to his wife. Somewhere in the story I saw a short mention of the character almost getting into an accident. So I played with that and made it into a paranormal story where the main character did get into the accident but his body didn't know it yet. So he got home to his wife who was just watching the news report his death and then he stood in their bedroom with a hole in his body. I was proud of that one. Our freshman teacher asked us to write a continuation to Of Mice and Men so I turned it into a ghost story. The setting is Crooks and Candy having a conversation in the barn. They're talking about George and wondering why he hasn't moved on and why he goes off alone every night. Candy thinks George is paying Lenny's ghost a visit out at the spot where he died. Crooks confesses that he can't sleep at night because he feels like the ghost of Curly's wife is haunting the barn. My teacher asked to keep the essay. Not a teacher but most of mine are surprised at the amount of gay. Not me but my dad. He teaches engineering and he was talking to his students about the meaning of different lights in the car. He said that if the check engine light lights up you are probably fucked. Flash forward to the exam. A student had to recognize the check engine light. He wrote next to its picture, you are probably fucked. I once had an elementary student write a story where John Cena randomly busted into the house about three quarters of the way into the story. Smart kid you are posing this question to mine ideas for your English assignment, well done. A student once wrote a story under the assigned heading of All That Glitters Is Not Gold. It was a first-person narration told as a comedy about a mother telling her daughter on her 21st birthday about the night she brought her home from the hospital. The twist was that the mother was talking to herself in what was due to by the child's bedroom, her child had actually died the night they brought her home. This. Floored. Me. My teacher marked exams for the whole country and she was just responsible for what they only called, the pit. A.K.A. ones that had been flagged for social services. She had all sorts from abuse, one student had written about her sister's court case, to religious fanatics. She had one that was entirely, Allah Akbar. Embedded into a student's analysis one day was the phrase, I like to suck C, C K. I simply wrote. Please proofread before next submission, the poor kid went bright red when they saw the comment. I knew it was a friend of theirs who had made a sneaky edit, so no punishment. But we all had a good laugh. While writing about the magic treehouse tonight on the Titanic, one of my students was writing about the people once they got into the water and wrote, the people in the water looked up and saw an incredible sight. And I was expecting it to proceed with how the boat was sitting out of the water at a steep angle, or how the propellers were visible as the book describes, nope. The band was still playing. Was what followed. I don't get many big twists since I teach little ones but that's the one I still like to think about sometimes because it would have been an incredible sight, for sure. I had a year 6 student write a multi-chapter love story with a thinly disguised version of herself as the protagonist who wins the love of her best, female, friend, who was also a thinly disguised version of the writer's BFF. It was so tender and wistful and sweet that it made me teary. I showed it, in confidence, to an older teacher who was mentoring me at the time. I felt as though the student was coming out to me, and I was unsure what to do, if anything. A few days later she came out to her family, who were very supportive. I don't know how the situation went with the crush on the BFF. 
They both went off to high school shortly after, so I don't know if anything eventuated. My principal found my gay fanfic I wrote of my boyfriend and of his friend. The story itself was fine but I really didn't expect the giant penis drawing at the end, which turned out to be a picture of three grassy mountains that were not once mentioned in the story. Also did a story circle with a kindy kid that told a very usual story of her going to get ice cream with mummy and daddy etc which suddenly ended in, and then I took all my fingers off and threw them in the air. Assignment. Write a post-apocalyptic short story with setting, characters, climax, etc. It started out as robots taking over the planet. Robots are controlled by a supervillain and are killing off all of mankind. Plot twist. The supervillain not only controls an army of robots, she also controls an army of feminists. Of course, this masterpiece ended with the male main character agreeing to go get coffee with the feminist supervillain. She just couldn't resist. A kindergartner I taught in Korea last year wrote this awesome story about a dragon who terrorized all the forest animals. They all worked together to defeat him and had a big party to celebrate. In a true show of forgiveness, the animals even invited the dragon to the party since he apologized for hurting them. But they didn't invite one animal, can't remember which one, because he was Japanese. At the time, there was a huge political movement in Korea to boycott Japan because of tensions over their refusal to acknowledge the use of Korean comfort women, read, the forced prostitution of colonized people, before and during World War II. I just didn't expect that out of the blue and from a five-year-old. Not a teacher, but would have been interested to ask my English lit teacher what he thought about my writing when I was studying the subject years ago at school, very much against my will. I didn't believe that he read my work and just put a few ticks here and there. So, I had the idea of making my handwriting increasingly illegible to see if was actually reading anything. By the end of term, I was still getting the same old ticks and he couldn't have read a word of it. You have a paper due in your creative writing course, don't you op? Really kind of annoying kid. Good person, but too much charisma and used it to goof off during class, regularly pulled 70s as a result of not paying attention. Held a poetry workshop he opted into. Wrote a poem about his dead parents, I knew he lived with grandma, but not why. The last line was, I laugh so I don't cry, shattered my heart. I gave my research student a day to think of something to research with. More likely a plan to come up with. By the way, I'm a pharmacologist and the next day she came up saying, Professor, I read a newspaper and found one interesting thing that I want to try. I was like great. What is it? It talked about mixing vinyl with soda. I want to incorporate two receptor with one enzyme to see the outcome. I'm not gonna lie, how vinyl and soda mix can bring such an idea was twisting. I was working in a pre-K classroom while the teacher was reading some stories the kids had dictated to her based on a collection of drawings. One child had a story called, Empire State Building, that she was about to read while I was organizing the refrigerator. The story went, there's a tornado. All of the people are dead. I had to keep my head buried in the fridge as I was red in the face from trying not to howl with laughter at the most amazing story hook a four-year-old ever wrote. I took pictures but really wish I had kept that story. The student here. I once was assigned a really damn boring essay. Write a letter to your English friend about your summer holidays and a friend you met, the teacher handed it back to me with an A+. The essay was how about I met a shadow demon named Mermac the Destroyer and how about we went to shark-infested waters and stole a guy's wallet. While a plague doctor was, fixing, his patient with hemomancy, blood magic, his mind took to much stress and he was kicked out of trance. One of the surrounding people grabbed a cigar from his bandolier, ripped off his mask and slammed it into his mouth. The tobacco instantly clarified his mind and he grew conscious enough to light the cigarette, immediately gifting him focus. Student wrote a fairly dark short story about being stabbed and lying on her floor, bleeding out while the police came in to arrest her dad, or something like that. She wrote it with a fountain pen, it's a thing we do in my classes, and used this really weird ink. When I asked her about the ink, she said it was blood she had collected from when she was actually stabbed. She wrote the whole damn story in her own blood. Teaching English to a class of three-year-old Thai children. One boy was particularly bright and was managing to write CVC and CVCC words, consonant vowel consonant and consonant vowel consonant consonant words. He calls me over and says, look, I can write. He proceeds to write, C. 
Well done. Dot. You. Great. In. Hmm. T. What does it say, teacher? Not a teacher. But once I wrote about some kind and poor guy who returned someone's money but at last wrote that he stole most of it. I was very small at that time but I still remember our teacher's confused face. Man this reminds me of the, me and quarantine, essay I turned in last week. I'm sure my teacher wasn't expecting me to just complain about how depressed I've been. I teach English honors and one story really stuck with me. It was written by a quiet Asian kid back in 2006. The story was told in first person and the way the atmosphere, setting, and imagery was conveyed made you feel demoralized, lonely, saddened, etc. One sentence went something like, October wind encapsulates my body as if searching for the last trace of warmth. At this point, I began to worry that this story was sort of cry for help. But it was in the last sentence that captured the moment and twist. Despite the depressing setting, he was actually writing the slow and agonizing moments of which your inner child no longer becomes a part of you but only a memory. I'm not a teacher, but in first grade we had to write a short story about something random. Everybody wrote a short story about things like tight shoes or hands I are something. But then I had to read out mine in front if the whole class quick reminder I was seven years back then. Everyone was expecting yet another short story about something random, but nobody knew that I had written about a page about Stalingrad and what consequences it had. How the German soldiers suffered and how almost everyone died. My teacher, wanted to talk to me after that and had told me that it wasn't really what she expected, but she also said that what I had written was just perfect. When I was a kid I wrote a story about a boy who made a fully functional plane out of Lego. It took him several tries to get it to work, but he finally did and his parents watched him proudly as he flew around their seaside cottage. Then there was a gust of wind that blew him into a cliff and a wing broke off. He ejected and died because his parachute was a garbage bag that he held open above him. When I was a teacher's aide in HS English one of the best things I ever graded was this amazing poem about a tiny dancer, the writer's little girl. But he was 17 and didn't have any kids. The assignment was to take a popular song and write about it. I still have a copy because I legit cried when I read it. I never knew he had such depths inside him. Charlie, if you see this, you are a brilliant bastard. My brother and I recently found our primary school class fairy tale book. Everybody had to write a fairy tale and our teacher printed and bound all the books herself. We read my brother's fairy tale and the plot was an old man living with a witch and they were both dirt poor. Through a few lucky breaks the witch finds a stone that turns everything into gold, making them rich AF. But, not acknowledging the fact they had an unlimited supply of gold, the last sentence then read, the old man wasn't poor anymore, because the witch found a job and went to work every day. Spooky story. A Halloween story written by a second grader a few years back. We have a national literacy and numeracy test called the NAPLAN in Australia. Instead of following the instructions for the writing task, one of my very traumatized students wrote this completely random letter to tell the recipient about how much he loves his teacher. I had a big sob when I read it. Sweet kid. 